Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work at IBM in Power Systems, Advanced Technology Support in Europe. This is a video in the AX In Focus series on active memory expansion. Now there's already a video on this from me when this feature first came out about 10 years ago. In the meantime, there's been some updates in its functionality and we want to cover those now. And also there's some interesting things to say about the price performance of this feature. This series is not going to cover the user level commands that everybody should know whether you're using Unix, AIX or Linux. We're just looking at the advanced features in AIX. AME is a medium level complexity. It's very easy to set up and get it running and monitoring it, but you do need to know quite a bit about performance to understand it. First, let's do a one minute reminder of active memory expansion. It improves performance by compressing many memory pages, and then uncompressing them on the fly on demand as applications use those pages. You can think of it as a compressed RAM disk, if that helps. Two benefits, you can either reduce the size of your virtual machine, freeing up memory for other uses in other virtual machines, or you can increase the effective size of your virtual machine, boost performance by doing less I.O. to get the data to your applications. Typical example uses is using the AME PAT command to predict the effects of various AME target sizes. You're having a trade-off between using more CPU and gaining more effective memory. You can switch it on and ask AME to not expand memory and it's there whenever you need it. You can dynamically change the expansion target factor on the HMC while the machine is actually running. You can also monitor AME with Topaz, Nmon, Njmon or LPOSTAT-C. So you can see the effects of what's going on and the benefits you're getting. So here's a link to my original video. Everything in there still applies. It's only 18 minutes long and I'll put the link into the YouTube page for this video. But it was made in 2010 based on the original features and the Power 6 and AIX 6. Of course, things have moved on. We're on Power 9 now and AIX 7.2. So there are new things that we'll cover now. The effectiveness of active memory expansion is down to the compression ratio of the actual contents of the memory or RAM inside your server. And that's different for every server. Some people have lots of pages full of zeros because of properly bad programming they compress very, very well. Some memory might have lots of customer records with names and addresses and lots and lots of spaces in it. They'll compress really well as well. Some are very, very hard to compress. The data is naturally practically random, which makes it very difficult to compress. Now, initially, I thought an expansion factor, so let's not go too mad. Let's go for 1.2 to 1.5. That's 20% extra RAM and 50% extra RAM. In the meantime, we've quizzed customers and the numbers they come back with is 1.75 to 2.25. So if you put in the middle, it's two. That's doubling the size of memory. And they've been working and running with these for a long time now. You can actually use that AME PAT command to find out what your memory pages compression ratios will be like and the effects that AME will actually have. And you can try that even if you haven't purchased AME. So you can do that today on your machines and see what the effect would be. So there is some good and bad news. The bad news is you have to purchase AME if you haven't already got it on your servers. It is a per server feature. So it's either switched on or off as an attribute of your server. You can find those on the HMC. The first video shows you how to do that. The good news is that many clients have it or they just had a policy of buying AME with every new machine and they find that it's very useful and they use it all day and they're amazed that not everybody has got it and switched it on. There's a bit of a fan club to be honest, and I haven't seen that with a lot of features. So let's look at the new features. We now have 64 kilobyte memory pages are supported, particularly good for databases that like using bigger pages with their modern database having bigger pages inside the database. With Power 8, we had hardware support for compression. This meant we could compress the 64K pages much quicker. And with the Power 9 introduction, we now have a full-blown accelerator in the chip that actually does this a lot faster for us. This means we get the benefits of extra memory, but we don't have the cost of using the main CPUs to do all the compression and decompression. So this is like a win-win in here, more memory, less CPU hit. If you're careful with your expansion factor, the main CPUs weren't used that much anyway. So what do you need to get the benefit of this? Well, 2017, we had X 7.2 TL1 came out, 
and that was on power 8 you needed this particular firmware level to switch it on. In 2018 of course we moved to power 9 processors these came with this fully available. Now if you purchased AME with the machine this should all be switched on by default particularly if you've done an install of the new copy of AIX. If you've grown up in AIX uh, updating it and updating it and doing live partition mobility onto the new power 8 or power 9 machine then it's worth checking that this first setting is set so the VMO capital L AME MP size support if that's set to one you're good to go if not you can use the other commands to check what the flag should be and the bottom one will tell you how to switch it on that assumes you have purchased AME for this particular server that AIX is running on there's no equivalent feature for Linux or IBM I because it is an AIX feature and I believe the Linux guys went off and said well we can do that too and, and I think they just gave up I've never seen it uh, being reported as available with Linux I'm told that SAP and Oracle both support AME but you'll have to ask them for details as I'm not allowed to speak for them. Switching on AME is completely invisible to the application unless they use those commands that I showed you to actually find out that it's switched on and what's going on. It's all within the AIX kernel. Now the other thing I found out about AME over the 11 years it's been out, I'm talking in 2020, is as far as I can determine, the price hasn't changed per core for 11 years. But of course, computers have changed drastically over that time. So I tried to find out two servers which are about the same size in the cores. We had the Power 6, the P570 32 core. The maximum amount of memory you could put into that machine was three quarters of a terabyte. A modern machine like the E950, I think it's actually a 33 core version if you take the 11 core chips, which gets even closer to the 32. But for that machine in that configuration, we can have 12 terabytes connected to it. So the amount of memory has gone up drastically, but the price remains the same. That makes a big difference because if we try and do the maths and we use um, an expansion factor of two, which is in the middle of what our customers tell us they're actually using instead of getting an extra three quarters of a terabyte using ame with our modern machines we get an extra 12 terabytes of memory and i think we all know when we're talking terabytes of memory we're talking about a lot of money that's a 16 times bigger benefit of AME. Uh, another way of looking at it is a 94% price reduction over that time. So this is a really cost effective way of effectively buying extra RAM inside your machine. Do remember that when you're purchasing your next Power 9 server. While putting this video together I found some more information sources with the extra information in them. I particularly like the AX Enhancements and Modernization book. There's only one page on AME, but it does include the version of AX and the hardware and firmware you need to run it. Again, these links will be in the YouTube page for the video. Official documentation, there's actually an active memory expansion feature page, and you can look at the lots of details in there. It's actually a menu page with a picture. Whoa, right? And there's the AME pack command. I'm sure you could find that, but there's the link to get you straight there. Lots of information about what's going on in there too. I've also updated my article on my expert blog. I updated it this year for this new information. One further article that has some more complicated commands for you to have a look at. So that's it for this video in the AX in Focus series, active memory expansion update. Now, don't forget to give us a, a thumbs up if you like this video. If you learned something, then give us a thumbs up. And please subscribe, and then you'll be told when the next video is uploaded. Have a good day.